Whoa, carbon fiber. That's pretty dope and pretty strong, right? Yeah, but can it hold this board together? Well, howdy, hey everyone. I'm Hippiotech, and I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Today, I'm gonna be building out the Muso Creator. It's a real sexy, sexy board with a couple not so sexy, sexy problems. We'll go over those issues in a bit, but first, what did we build it out with? We used Duroc Yellow Linears, which are a light little linear switch, and Kinetic Labs Polycaps Black on White. Coming in at right around 350 US dollars, I figured this would be a good mid-range build to try it out with. Anyways, sit back, relax, grab some switches to lube, and enjoy the build. Hit it, yo, from the lube boy. So, here to give you a quick little disclaimer, this board was sent to me for free by Muso to review. I am a little bit critical of this board in this video, and they are very respectful of the feedback and wanted to use it to improve their next board in the future. I think overall this board has a lot of potential, and with some of the changes I'm going to recommend, could end up as a very fair proposition at its price point. Moving on to shipping and packaging, the board was shipped decently and arrived very safely from Hong Kong. The packaging was nothing to write home about, but overall was pretty decent. It came with your basic accessories of a kind of crummy USB-C cable, but it was purple, and that's kind of cool. Now, this is just a minor nitpick, but they failed to include a switch puller or keycap puller, which can be a bad thing if you're a beginner just getting into the hobby, as you have to buy a new one separately. But they did include this really, really dope metal machine keycap with their Muso logo on it. I think more boards need to do something like this, as it's a really nice touch and a pretty cool logo. Also, this little guy was the thockiest key on the board. That's pretty cool. Anyways, we'll finally break in and show you the board. Right after I show you these screws or whatever, I guess. The board comes with the top part of the housing disassembled, which I think is an interesting touch, but we'll get to that later. This board comes in quite a few different variants, which could be confusing to beginners. Here I have the Type 60A, which is a DIY kit that you build out yourself. This is a 60% layout that includes the arrow keys, which is personally my favorite way to do the 60% layout and it comes in right around 250 US dollars for this DIY kit. This means that your switches and keycaps are gonna come separately. So that's why my total build price came out to 350 US dollars. For $50 more, Muso offers a pre-built version with keycaps and switches. This would be a good option if you wanna do absolutely nothing with your board, but if you wanna build it out and tinker like an enthusiast, that's when I would recommend buying your own switches and keycaps. As far as build quality for this bad boy goes, this is a really sturdy construction. It's a two-piece construction and uses a tray mounting style. The board is machined from 6061 aluminum and then sandblasted and anodized. As far as quality of the machining goes, this board definitely hits the price tag, and it really looks beautiful with the separate anodization on the top and bottom pieces. This little chonker is 1.4 kilograms, or 3 pounds in freedom units, which makes it heavy but not too heavy. Moving on to the back of the board, you can see the four holes where the top screws into the bottom, as well as spots for rubber feet, which we'll put on later. I really like the angles that they cut into this board with, and again, I think the machining's definitely the best part here with this board. It feels a little bit more creative than, ha, huh, hunk of metal rectangle go brrr. Moving on to talk about the carbon fiber plate, it's got some flex to it, which could lead to a pretty nice typing experience, but you've still got hot spots from where the standoffs connect. Now, it's not as bad as it could be. The carbon fiber plate has built-in rubber standoffs, which give it some squishy squish, However, that squishiness helps a little bit, but it's still gonna be a stiffer typing experience. Nothing wrong with being stiff though. Next, let's hear those stabs. Hmm. Hello? Yeah, those are pretty bad. We'll talk about those in a second. But first, let's pull off that top piece and take a look at the rest of the board. Don't mind me here, I'm just feeling the metal. It feels nice. Here you can see the metal standoffs that connect the PCB and plate to the bottom housing. This is what makes it a tray mount and rather stiff as it doesn't give the PCB much room to flex. Some people modify these by adding gaskets to the standoffs and I think that's okay. Here you can see the plate has a lot of room to flex but the PCB has basically none. Now let's take out those plate mount stabilizers to show you the dirty, dirty secret. Now, I get mad at Idobao a lot for including really bad stabilizers with their boards, and I think Muso is no exception here. I think honestly it would be better if they didn't include the stabilizers, as it's just really a bad look to include this cheap of stabilizers with an expensive board. Also, here's the deep dark secret, deep dark secret time. This board doesn't support PCB or screw and mount stabilizers, and it's north facing LED, but doesn't even have any LEDs. 
For those of you that are new, north facing LEDs cause a little bit of interference with cherry profile keycaps. Normally it's justified because it's for the sake of RGB, but there's no LEDs here, so it's kind of hard to defend. Bruh. I'd say recommendation number one for Muso, get rid of this PCB and find a different PCB to use. This would fix the north facing LED issue as well as the stabilizer issue with one fell swoop. While we're in the business of recommendations, I recommend Bruh. adding some foam to the case and possibly between the plate and PCB as well. You'll see why in just a couple minutes. Speaking of the plate, it's got a nice engraved Muso and Type 60A logo in it. Also, carbon fiber is pretty dope. These rubber gaskets on the bottom are pretty interesting. Let me just give you a quick little preview. Squish, squish, see? Squish, 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 they're rubber. Tip what? number three, I think adding some of those squishy guys to this bottom section of the case would be a pretty good idea. Also, because of how the bottom is designed, it'd be kind of hard to do like a silicone pour or anything. Anyways, let's just get this assembled. So I put the top plate on, I add these little bolts, and then I get ready for my magic spell. Pop. They go in with the included Allen key, and overall, this thing feels pretty sturdy. Pop. Oh yeah, rubber feet again. These rubber feet are very, very rigid, and reduce the slippy slidey quite well. Oh, we've teleported to an alternate dimension where I'm going to lube up all of the stabilizers. The stabilizers for this board are plate mount and came bone dry. Now, honestly, if you buy this board, throw these out, buy some Duroc plate mount stabilizers, and thank me later. Uh, use code HIPPIO at Prevail Key Company in the description, you'll save 5%. But really though, these are, these are quite awful. Even after clipping and lubing them up pretty generously, the only option you had with these was mushy or clicky. Normally I would swap these out, but I actually don't have any plate mount stabs on hand. So, these are what you get. Oh, Hippio, are those Gateron yellows? No, they're Duroc yellows. I don't even know why you would think they're Gateron yellows. The yellow is a totally different shade of yellow. Gee whiz. These are some 55 gram linears that I purchased from Kinetic Labs. Want to buy some and support the channel? Consider clicking that link down in the description below. I lubed all of these by hand, although it really wasn't necessary as they came with pretty good factory lubing. I wanted to give this board the best shot possible with the switches, even though most of the switches it comes with are stock Gateron switches. It's really hard to go wrong with the Duroc Linear, and these are just a nice light version of them. Maybe one day I'll do a Duroc Linear switch review? Make sure you're subscribed for that, it could happen. So yeah, the board is gorgeous, but what keycaps are we going to put on it? Well, great question, keep asking those good questions. To stick with the Kinetic Labs sponsor vibe, I decided to go with Kinetic Labs black on white polycaps. Now, the switches I purchased myself, but these keycaps were sent to me for review by Kinetic Labs. You can also get these down in the description, but I did make a grave mistake of not knowing that these didn't really support this layout. These are double shot PBT keycaps, and they're all right quality. I did see a little bit of warping issues with the spacebar earlier in the video, but I decided just to flip the spacebar and it turned out pretty well. But yeah, because this board uses a very odd layout and a 2U left shift, which is very non-standard, we had to go with the zero key. But hey, look at that metal keycap. That's a nice little metal keycap, yeah. Ooh. So the build is done, and honestly, looks are subjective, but I really love the look of this board. The sound, well, we'll be talking about that soon. I found the typing experience on this board to be all right. It feels kind of just like an Eidobau board, honestly, where it's stiffish, but passable, like you wouldn't get mad at it, but you also wouldn't be blown away by it. However, I reckon this case has a little bit of pinging issues and didn't sound the best to type on at first. Now I'll be alleviating this later in the video, but let me just leave you with the sound test real fast and let me know what you think in the comments. Now this is definitely pingier than I'd like for a $250 board, but I cut up some carbon air filters which I just had laying around, and I stuffed the board full of them, which was relatively easy actually, they fit in quite nicely. Also it's worth noting that the microphone amplified the ping like a ton and it really wasn't that bad. But hey, sound tests are subjective and don't listen to sound tests, yeah, except I'm gonna give you one at the end of this video, so woohoo, hypocrite time! Anyways Muso, if you're watching this video, if you implement those 3-4 to four things that I recommended, I reckon this would be a pretty decent board. Until then, I have a hard time recommending this to enthusiasts, but as your average Joe just looking for a metal keyboard that goes thonk thonk, I guess it, I could see people wanting it. Well, that's the end of the build. 
First, I'd like to thank you guys a lot, as I just hit 25k subs, and my growth lately has been incredible. It's honestly awesome. Next, I'm gonna leave you guys with a sound test, and if you like this video, do a sound test of your own in the comments, and make sure you get subscribed. Finally, a special thank you to all the people that give me money to make dumb videos like this. If you want to give me money to make dumb videos, click that join button down below, and you might even get a special thank you like the people that join the Hippios Chosen tier. Thank you to Not Sus, Zach, Platy Plat, Cody J, and Aquarius. Bye!